Hi, friends. I'm excited to be sharing with you. I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about the importance of having a personal quiet time. You know, um, the reason I think it's super important to learn how to have a quiet time or a devotional or whatever you want to call it is because there's something that happens when we talk to the Lord and there's something that happens when he speaks to us. You see, the Bible says he who comes to God must believe two things. One, that he is, that he exists. And two, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In other words, prayer is an expression of faith. And it fulfills both of those requirements. One, I believe that he is. Otherwise, I'm just talking to the air. And two, I believe that, that by seeking him, which we do through prayer, we're actually discovering that God has rewards for us. There's things that are going to come to us. Now, I'm not talking about financial rewards so much as there are blessings that come to us when we pray. Secondly, there is in any relationship a need for communication, whether it's a husband and wife or a friendship, or for that matter, a parent to a child, when communication is healthy, uh, it doesn't always mean that you're getting along, but it does mean that you're sharing what's in your heart. And to work out problems and to build a better relationship and to enjoy each other, any relationship that you have or will ever have, I believe on this earth, involves at least two things. One, you've spent time together You've gone through things together, and you've shared, you've talked. It's not just about being, you know, you might work with somebody for 10 years and not know them. They're in the same room. You, you may as you go through things at the company, but you're not really that close. But any friend, any close person in your life, you have spent time with them going through things and communicating. Jesus gives us an indication of this when he describes friendship with these words, he says to his disciples there in John 15, no longer do I call you servants. For a servant doesn't really know what his master is doing. But I have called you friend. For everything the Father has made known to me, I have made known to you. I, I call it complete self-disclosure. The person that you're closest to, the person that you trust, is the person you're communicating with. And I find that when, when I'm in a good relationship with somebody, I am listening to them, probably not as much as I should, and I am sharing with them how I really feel what's going on in my heart. So the reason I think a quiet time is important, it's not a religious obligation or nowhere commanded, thou shalt have quiet times, but it's because of the benefits that it brings to us relationally with our Lord. We want to be closer to him. And so, how do, we, how do we talk to God? Well, that's prayer. How does God speak to us? That's the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God, and it's how God ministers to us. If we want to grow in our faith, we need the Word of God. Why? Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing the Word of God. And so, this is at the basic understanding of why being in the Lord's presence through prayer and receiving from the Lord's uh, word, his revelation is going to build our faith and grow our relationship with God. Now, in addition to that, Jesus himself made it very clear that spending time alone with God was a priority. He didn't just pray when he had problems. He didn't just pray when there was, was an issue or when he needed guidance. He prayed on a regular basis, and he was sinless, unlike us. <laughs> we, we need to pray, God, forgive us. Jesus never had to pray for forgiveness, but he prayed, not just as an example to us, but because he loved his heavenly Father, and he was dependent on his Father. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It, it causes you to want to depend on God for everything and to seek him earnestly. And so we find that Jesus is our example. Uh, we see, for instance, he prayed what we call the high priestly prayer. He doesn't call it that, but in John 17, an entire chapter of the Bible reveals his heart 
as to what he's praying for. But we see him praying at other times. He prayed for meals. Um, he spent a whole night in prayer before he chose his disciples. There in the Garden of Gethsemane, we know that he asked his disciples to pray along with them. And although he, they slept, he prayed and he had the victory. So we need to see that prayer is an essential part of our relationship with God. But Jesus said this, he said, when you pray, go into your inner room and lock the door, shut the door. And when you pray in secret, your heavenly Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So we know there are rewards for those who seek the Lord through prayer. So prayer is a vital part of our relationship with the Lord. It's interesting when Paul got saved. Of course, he was basically an antichrist in the church in the first century. He was arresting Christians. He didn't believe Jesus was alive from the dead. He certainly didn't believe he was the Messiah. And uh, But then Jesus showed up and proved that he was alive. And he was blown away. Literally, he must have been in shock. And he was blinded on top of it. But what's interesting is that when the Lord sends Ananias to go lay hands on Paul that he might receive his sight. And Ananias, of course, complains, Lord, I've heard of this man, and he's done much harm to the saints. Here's God's answer to Ananias concerning the reality of Paul's faith. He says, go, for behold, he prayeth. In other words, that's at the heart and core. God says, I, I want to say one thing about Paul, and then you'll know he's one of mine. He's praying. And so let me ask you, How's your prayer life? How's your personal time in the Word? I'm not asking you if you believe in prayer. I'm not asking you if you believe in the Bible. My guess is the answer is yes. But how vital is God's Word to your personal relationship with the Lord in terms of spending time in the Word personally? And then how's your prayer life, your private prayer life? Because it's been said the secret of prayer is prayer in secret. And uh, so I want to spend some time talking about how to develop, how to uh, uh, kind of have a time that's your time alone with the Lord. And all of our schedules are different. I understand what works for me might not work for you. And I understand that you're going to have to figure out uh, personally before the Lord how to do this thing. But I want to talk a little bit about how it came about in my life that I started even working on this area. I had been a Christian for a while, and I had prayed to receive Christ at the age of 13, and uh, started attending church, and of course I had my Bible. I didn't really read it much, but I believed it, and I would go to church, and I would be in the youth group, you know, first in junior high, and then high school, and then the college group, and uh, you know, I was growing in the Lord. I had Christian friends, and I would go to Christian concerts, and pretty much my spiritual life revolved around my spiritual experiences, and I had kind of a roller coaster Christian life, and a lot of Christians can relate to that. If things were going great in my life, I was on a high. When things were going bad, I was on a low, and I just thought, well, that's just life, you know. And then I started having this concern that I really wasn't growing much as a Christian. In fact, in some ways, I was backsliding. I was doing things that I, I thought I had stopped doing. And God started giving me this desire to seek him. I just got to confess to you, I was pretty burdened because I felt like I was blowing it. And I think I really was. I didn't spend time in prayer. I didn't spend time in the word, although I still had fellowship and I still went to church. But I was just in many ways, I don't want to say fully backslidden, but I wasn't moving forward either, you know. And there at the age of about 17, 18 years old. So I was still very much a young man. I remember having this discussion with the Lord. I, I said, Lord, I really love you. And I love your word. I love to read it. And there were times that I even enjoyed studying it. Um, but I didn't feel like prayer was a vital part of my life. I also noticed that sharing my faith wasn't really a vital part of my life either. And I wondered if those two might have something to do with each other. And they do. And so I started praying, Lord, I want to learn to pray. And I felt almost like those the disciples who came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. I mean, I knew how to pray since the time I was a child. My mom and dad taught me, fold your hands, Bob, 
close your eyes and bow your head and just talk to God about whatever you want. Well, the problem with that is that I, I, I just didn't know what to talk to God about. I didn't know what I should tell him. I'm thinking he already knows everything. He already knows all about me. And I just found that prayer was hard for me. Even though you can do it anywhere, it was something that I neglected. It was something that I didn't feel that I valued very much or that it seemed to have any effect. So I just started telling the Lord, Lord, I, I, at that point in my life, 17, 18, I started feeling a call to the ministry. And to be honest, I started thinking, how can I be a pastor? How can I go into the ministry with such a wimpy prayer life, you know? And, uh, and it was partially because of that. I felt like I really need to, to understand prayer better. I'm not a prayer warrior. If I say my name and prayer warrior, they don't go into the same bin. And, but I started doing what I, I knew to do. I started reading my Bible because while I asked the Lord for help, I primarily started reading through my Bible. And this was a time when I started actually memorizing scripture and I was spending a lot more time in my Bible studies. And I, I started underlining and, and notating every passage that had to do with prayer all through the Bible. And I found that the people that God used all through scripture, throughout history, were men and women who were devoted to prayer. And of course, Jesus is my example in everything, and, and he had taught his disciples to pray. And so I wanted to look at his prayer life and also understand the things he said about prayer. For instance, he said, when you pray, pray like this. And of course, he prayed what we call the Lord's Prayer. He gave us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And so I started really looking at that prayer. I had memorized the prayer, but I started looking at it, breaking it down. I started praying that prayer, understanding it and studying it more. And fascinating things came out of that study. One of those truths that came out of the study is that the Lord was giving us a daily prayer. And that should be obvious to all of us because we pray asking for daily bread. And I realized the Lord wants us to talk to him every day. Now, listen, I hear from people all the time saying, oh, pastor, I pray all through the day. I don't really take time alone to pray with God because I, I pray without ceasing at work and on the high. Hey, I think that's awesome. I think that's great to talk to the Lord all through the day. I believe Jesus had unbroken fellowship with the Father. but Jesus also would spend time alone in private with his heavenly father. And so I think that's clearly our example. We need to spend time alone with God as well as spend time constantly with the Lord, not either or. And so when I discovered Jesus had given us a daily prayer, I realized the Lord wants me to have time alone with him on a daily basis. You know, there's an old story of a king who used to give his sons an a annual allowance. They were grown men, but he'd give them an annual allowance. And he said, I see them once a year. And so I decided to give them a daily allowance. And he said, now I see them every day. And Jesus said, you know what? Uh, don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry for itself. You've got enough stuff going on right now. The Lord wants us to come to him on a daily basis for our daily needs. And uh, so it doesn't surprise me that he said, pray for daily bread, even though our, our Dave's killer bread is going to last for maybe a week or more. Hey, there are needs in your life and in my life that are on a daily basis. And so I want to encourage you to realize that what God wants to do in your life to empower you, for you to experience his presence, his joy, which is where, by the way, it's in his presence, his peace, which comes by being with him. Those things are waiting for you. Those are some of the rewards God has for you, as well as his direction, his healing, etc. But they come by spending time alone with him, talking to him and letting him speak to you through his word. So in the future sessions, we're going to talk more about how do you do it? Not just that I should do it, that Jesus did it, but how can I do it personally? And I hope and pray that I'm able to give you a way that you can choose to actually put right into your life, right into your schedule. Maybe you have more time than you used to have right now in your life, and maybe this is the perfect time.
but I can tell you whether you have a ton of time or hardly any time, there's no time like now to learn to be in the presence of God and to discover all the rewards he has for you. God bless you.